Welcome to the Exploring Unschooling podcast. I'm Pam Larickia, unschooling mom and author, bringing you interviews, information, and inspiration about unschooling and living joyfully with your family. You can find the episode show notes, your free Exploring Unschooling ebook, and lots more information at livingjoyfully.ca. And here's the show. Hello, everyone. This is episode number 10 of the podcast, and it's the 9th of March, 2016, as I record this intro. In this episode, I talk to Rick Rossing, a stay-at-home unschooling dad. He and his wife, Deb, have one child, Joshua, who will be turning 18 this year. I really enjoyed the glimpse into their unschooling lives. I find it so very fascinating. One of my favorite things from this episode is when Rick shared this insight. One of the things we've discovered is that giving Joshua the freedom to pursue the things he wants to do isn't a one-way street. It means that we as adults also give ourselves freedom to pursue things that we want to try. And that was just profound, liberating. It was like an epiphany in our family. But before we get on to the interview, a quick update on life around here. A couple of days ago, I updated the schedule on the website for the Childhood Redefined Unschooling Summit that I'm co-hosting with Ann Oman. The event is being held April 29th to May 1st in Canandaigua, New York. It's an intensive adult gathering where we'll be diving deep into unschooling and parenting. There will be five interactive sessions, plus lots of opportunity to connect with other parents who hold the same vision and intentions about living and learning. And now you can find the session details, along with all the rest of the information, at childhoodredefined.com. Registration closes April 3rd, so don't wait too long. And feel free to email me if you have any questions. The quote I want to share this week is from Robert Brault. He writes, Do not ask that your kids live up to your expectations. Let your kids be who they are, and your expectations will be in breathless pursuit. I know I and many other unschooling parents have found this to be amazingly true. When we do the work to let our children be who they are, the ripples through all our lives are incredible. Like the epiphany Rick talks about. Like Robert Brault's revelation that any expectations we hold just get in their way. Remember, if you have anything you'd like to share about the episode, head on over to livingjoyfully.ca forward slash podcast and share in the comments for episode 10. And now on to the interview. Hi, everyone. I'm Pam Larickia from livingjoyfully.ca. And today I'm here with Rick Rossing. Hi, Rick. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. It's great to have you on the show. Uh, Rick is an unschooling stay-at-home dad. I've known him and his family for years through unschooling circles, and we've met a few times at conferences and gatherings. But for our listeners, can you share with us a bit about your background and your family, Rick? Sure. Um, Well, I'm a stay-at-home dad. Um, I was an Air Force brat, so I moved around the country a lot, while my wife was pretty much born and raised in the same place. She, you know, she grew up in New Jersey. I grew up all over the United States. Uh, we have a one son who is going to turn 18 this year. Have no idea how that happened, <laughs> but, um, but that that's pretty much it. My wife is a software test engineer. Uh, her job is making programmers lives miserable. <laughs> um, I'm a stay home dad in my spare time which oddly enough, I have some every now and then. (laughs) Um, I create things out of duct tape, purses and wallets and whatnot. And I also write science fiction and fantasy novels. That's very cool. I know I've got a few of your duct tape creations. They're very nice. (laughs) One one holds my my old Nintendo DS still, so it's lovely. So I was curious, how did you guys actually discover unschooling and what did your family's move to unschooling look like? Okay. Well, first we started before we ever even had children, we began researching homeschooling because my family, you know, my mother was having trouble with some of my younger sisters. Uh, They were having trouble in school. 
And so Mm -hmm. she was looking at options to public schooling. And so my wife, who is a very thorough type person, um, began researching and she would share with me anything that she discovered. And so we, a long time ago, decided that if ever we had kids, we were going to homeschool them. And it was kind of a domino effect from there. Once you start questioning one thing, then other things start falling into place. Um, So once we got to the point where, okay, so maybe it is possible to educate our children ourselves without going through a public school system or letting the government do it. Um, Once we started doing that, then we started asking, well, what if instead of telling our child what he's going to learn, let him find what his interests are. And from, you know, from there, it was kind of a domino effect. Um, We gradually became uh, more and more free in our, in our thinking and in our style of parenting. Um, And then eventually we found out that it was called unschooling. Mm. And we said, you know, that kind of matches what we're doing. So that's what we are. Well, that's really cool. That's that's an interesting way that uh, your wife came upon the idea of homeschooling, you know, even before you guys had kids and you'd had a chance to talk about it and stuff. But mm-hmm. That's always interesting to hear. Um, and how did the choice for you to be the stay-at-home parent evolve? Well, that one was kind of easy. Deb has always had a better job than I did. <laughs> and so um, once Joshua was born, We decided that since she was, you know, she had a more stable income than I did, especially at that time because I was in college. Um, So I was changing careers at the time. And so she decided, you know, well, we decided together that she had better job opportunities than I did. And so she's been, you know, so she's been working and I've been pretty much playing the rest of the time. It's fun how unschooling seems like playing, right? (laughs) I know for us, unschooling multiple children had some challenges, like working through sibling conflicts and figuring out ways to support different interests at the same time. And I expect that there are also challenges inherent with unschooling one child. I was curious about what your experience has been. Well, um, for one thing, we've never had to find out or we never had, um, you know, finger pointing whenever somebody asked, okay, who did this? Because (laughs) we knew who it was for the most part. Yeah. So, so we never had the not me argument or anything like that. I'm not sure if we would call it a challenge or a concern, but we used to fear that because Joshua didn't have any siblings that he would get bored during the day or he would drive dad crazy. Um, Mm -hmm. So far, neither has happened. (laughs) Um, well, I guess that's debatable. Some people would, would, would debate whether or not I'm in fact crazy, but, (laughs) and, and for my part, I won't argue with anyone in that particular, you know, in that regard. (laughs) Um, so we were kind of concerned that no siblings means no playmates, no, no interests or, you know, nobody to play with who's his own age. And we got to the point where we found out that it's really not that big a deal. Um, he found, he, um, let me start that over again. He discovered friendships among people who were closer to our age than his own age. Mm-hmm. Um, and he had a better time, I thought, than I ever did of making friends with people who were not the same age as, as he was. Um, and it's interesting because whenever we would go somewhere, if there were families of children that we knew, he would play, f- he would play a lot more easily with people who are either older than him or a lot younger than him. You know, so the young children, you know, he would be the one that the young kids would like to climb all over. Yeah, yeah. And when he was that age, he was the person that would climb all over the older kids. <laughs> um, and so he has always gotten along better with people who weren't exactly the same age as he was. Um, 
And we wondered if that was a problem until we realized that none of us have friends who are exactly our age either. Because the older you get, the more diverse the, you know, the age range of the people that you typically hang around with become. And so having you know, age-segregated peers, just we decided that that wasn't a priority any longer. Yeah, I think we, we found that as well, you know, because it's it's more about the connection than the age, right? Exactly. Yeah, and uh, I mean, my kids are, are the first ones, you know, when there's little kids around to, to play with them for hours. I mean, I remember Christmas Eve just this last year with the little nieces running around and they were, th- them and, and my kids were just, you know, together the whole evening playing uh, you know, whatever games the little kids wanted and they had the patience for it and they enjoyed it and everybody was, you know, really focused on that. You know what I mean? And and they don't feel bad about hanging out with other ages. That's not something that they absorb, right? Yeah. Um, I think that for unschoolers and homeschoolers in general, um, mm-hmm. when you're not constrained to a classroom, the the idea of only being able to hang around with people who are the same age as you just it doesn't enter the equation. Mm-hmm. Um, you can surround yourself with just about anybody, and we do. <laughs> One thing I was curious about as well, or another thing, um, was whether or not Joshua ever developed any interest that stretched your comfort zones. And if that happened, how did you move through that? Well, I'm not sure that I understand what you mean by comfort zone. Um, we've never been uncomfortable with anything that he is, you know, that he has found interesting. Um, mm-hmm. We have at times found what he is interested in less interesting than he did. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, for example, when he was a lot younger, he was really into Pokemon. Mm-hmm. And neither one of us were particularly interested in it. But so that we'd be able to understand what he was doing, I ended up picking up a copy of the of the game. I think back then it was Silver and Gold were, were, the, uh, were the, the companion versions. And mm-hmm. so I started playing along. And found out that it wasn't so bad after all. But other than that, um, we've always been totally supportive of whatever Joshua decides he wants to do. Um, Fortunately, we haven't run into any situations where he's wanted to do something that we really, really wished that he wouldn't. Um, I'm hoping that that's going to remain the situation. (laughs) But... Like I said, he's turning 18 soon, and there's a time coming when we won't be able to tell him whether or not he can, you know, he can pursue something or not, um, not legally anyway. <laughs> so we've we've tried to to stay open minded about just about anything, um, and also try to stay involved so that whatever it is that he does want to do, that we try to remain available to him, that he, you know, he's all, he'll, he knows that he can always come to us and ask us questions or for advice or talk about something that he's doing, even if it's something that we don't know anything about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's a, I think that's a great way to keep it keep the uh, connection going, right? So yeah. that they can you know, come for conversations. Plus, I mean, open-minded to, you know, uh, his interest in video games. Those are things that maybe other people might not have had as much of a comfort zone for. So I think that's been probably been really helpful for him as well. And by trying things out, you find, you can find some of the reasons why he's finding them interesting, right? Yeah. Video games in general, I grew up a gamer, and so for him to be playing video games didn't seem abnormal to me. Mm -hmm. Um, Deb, on the other hand, is not a gamer. 
never has been, probably never really will be. Um, she just doesn't like the motion in some of the, the more modern games. And yeah. so it was a little bit more of a struggle for her. Um, you know, so I think she was a little less comfortable with, um, you know, Joshua playing video games than I was. And for that matter, me playing video games. Um, <laughs> because I can, you know, you know, I can go on a game bender and, and you know, decide, you know, I'm tired of playing this. I think I'll stop. And the next thing I know, it's two, uh, two hours later, it's dark and Deb will be home soon. And I haven't started supper yet because I'm still <laughs> playing a game, um, that, which can happen. But one of the things that we've discovered is that giving Joshua the freedom to pursue the things that he wants to do isn't a one-way street. Um, it also means that we as adults also give ourselves freedom to pursue things that we want to try. Um, and that was just profound, liberating. You know, it, it was like an epiphany in our family because I was watching Joshua get to do whatever he wanted to do. And I was still at, at this point, I was doing the things that I thought I was supposed to do as an adult. Mm -hmm. um, for example, now, right now I'm wearing a shirt that says I can't adult today. <laughs> um, I've got a picture of it on Facebook if, if somebody ever wants to see it, but um, it, it was liberating that, yeah, you can be a grown up and you can still love things. And so my being able to pursue the things that I wanted to do, you know, like getting into writing, getting into playing with duct tape, um, even playing video games, has made it a lot easier for both Deb and I to relate to Joshua whenever he wants to try something new. That's great. I found that to be one of the huge, I guess, epiphanies is a good word for it, you know, <laughs> that that. Um, Children are people and, and I'm a person <laughs> yeah. and we, we can still be excited and interested in things. That was fascinating because I would at first when we started, you know, I'd get excited for them about the things that they found exciting. But eventually it's like, hey, I'm excited about this particular thing and no, nobody else is. Oops, is that OK? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's OK. If, exactly. If, if we're the only ones that like to do something, then that means that we don't have to share it as much. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, and and sharing your excitement, they they mirror it back, right? Because yeah. well, sometimes. you've shown excitement in there. Well, excite, excited for you that you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There does come to a point where, you know, Dad, I'm really happy for you. But what you're asking me to, or, or you know, what you're telling me is just not that interesting. Can can I go back to my video game now? And and I'll say sure, but it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, when I'm when I'm done, although the interesting thing is that now Joshua's video gaming tends to be more on his computer. Uh, he's got his own laptop, and so he plays. Um, oh, and I don't remember the name of the game now. And if I try to say it, I'll say it wrong. So it'll be. So then I'll sound like an idiot. <laughs> but uh, he was for a long time, um, he used to play Minecraft a lot. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the game. I've played it, never been terribly interested in it. But I know enough about it that whenever he got excited about it, I knew, you know, I knew why he was excited. And mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, learned how to make certain um, Minecraft characters out of duct tape. Um, and, and, and like that, when I'm playing video games, I tend to do the, the console gaming. So I'm ah. more on the TV, you know, the playstations. Um, and so the, the, the upside of that is I don't have to compete with my son for game time. <laughs> if I, want to <laughs> game, I just have to make sure nobody else is, is, is watching TV. Uh, of course, that does mean that I have to compete with my wife over who gets to decide what's on the TV in the living room, if it's a video <laughs> game, or we're going to watch, uh, you know, watch a TV program or a movie or something. Yeah, I've noticed that too with uh, my son's, you know, gaming uh, 
was a lot on the consoles when they were younger, and they have definitely migrated more to uh, computer-based gaming. I guess uh, the the quality is also there, right, with the advances in the computers versus the console technology. Yeah, the quality, and also I think the customizability. Um, yeah. The ability to you know to to download a mod for a game so that you can you know, I mean, for example, a lot of some of the um, I think Skyrim has got a few mods on the computer version where you can, you know, I, I, you know just kind of for an example, um, turn all the buildings into like gingerbread houses or something like that. I mm-hmm. don't know if that mod exists, but now I think it should. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I want to change all of the, you know, change this scenery so that it looks like Super Mario Brothers or something like that. Yeah, that's a great point because you're right. They do do a lot of uh, modding, downloading them, playing around with them, doing their own stuff to them. So, yeah, that's that's super cool. I was wondering if uh, looking back on how Joshua's interests have grown and changed over the years, can you see a thread or two that has run through them up to this point? Well, um, for one thing, Joshua has been always – more of a of a of a solitary player than a team player. Um, mm-hmm. For example, we took him to a soccer camp one one year, uh, and he enjoyed doing the drills. You know, he liked running around with the soccer ball. He didn't like actually playing the game. Mm-hmm. He didn't like the team sport aspect of it as much, um, and so. We took him to uh, – we, we had let him have golf lessons at one time, and he loved that because it's it, you know, it's kind of a, a meditative um, – it, it's a it's, – I'm trying to think of a really good way to put it, but I think meditative is the, is the, is the way to go. Um, mm-hmm. He liked solo pursuits. Things where it's him against, you know, him against a video, himself. Game, him yeah. against himself, um, as opposed to even him against another person. Mm-hmm. Um, he's very non-confrontative, if that's a word, and if so, it's a really good one. But <laughs> he, he doesn't, yeah. So he doesn't like to compete with other people. Um, with one exception being beating the pants off of his dad in, in like arena games or something like that. <laughs> um, you know, we used to have a, a way back when the, what the PS2 was out. So at least five or 10 years ago, um, we would play this James Bond game in multiple screen, you know, multiple players. Um, and he was so good at being able to, see what was on you know, his, his screen awareness was such that not only did he know where he was by what his window showed, but he was able to look at my window, <laughs> my, my part of the screen, know exactly where I was, come up behind me and kill me while I was, you know, while I was trying to, to <laughs> find a good way to, to snipe at him. Yeah. Um, and so he, he got to the point where he was better at gaming than I was. Um, and so, you know, so a common thread, um, he has always been a fan of technology, I think. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so video games, typing, um, anything along those lines. You know, so, so I guess his common thread is he, he likes to explore, but on his own terms. He he doesn't really like you know he doesn't like team events. Um, although he'll watch you know he'll watch sports with us, and he probably gets that from me because I'd rather watch a sport than play it myself. <laughs> but I would prefer you know w- when I'm doing something, I don't like to c- compete with other people either. Mm-hmm. Um, I like doing something for the enjoyment of it and not because I can do it better or faster than somebody else. And I think that um, he follows that same bent. Yeah. I I found that um, 
It, it's interesting because, I mean, team sports are, you know, uh, very conventionally accepted, right? Um, and that's something that a lot of parents want their, they want their kids to participate in this team sport, learn how to get along with people and that, yeah. that kind of stuff. But Soccer when I think... is a term for a reason. <laughs> for a reason. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, you know, when I think... Michael, my son, um, karate has been his uh, sport of interest and passion. And, you know, that is meditative focus. You know, you're challenging yourself. And when I think when I was growing up, I, uh, I was very passionate about ballet for like 12 or 13 years. That was like the main focus of my time outside of school. And it was the same thing. You know, you're challenging yourself to um, improve and you can really, you sink into the activity, right? Yeah. Um, so I think those kinds of, of sports are just just as beneficial. It, you find what matches with your, with your personality, right? Yeah. Just as, as Joshua has found. Yeah, I yeah. Think if Joshua were going to, to pursue a sport, he would probably be the kind of person who would take on um, you know, cross country running or something like that. Yeah. Because it's, you know, with running, it's you and the environment. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's other people running, running too, but that wouldn't, that wouldn't be his focus. You know, he wouldn't be mm -hmm. to win races. He would just be out there running, uh, which he does like to do. He likes to run. Yeah. Yeah, no, and and you know, for people who love team sports, that's great too. But yeah, I just think the the value is in um, how the the sport meshes with the person. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, there was one another thing I was curious about um, as. Deb was working outside the home. Um, what were some of the things that you guys did, all three of you, to help her stay connected with Joshua? Well, for one thing, um, it was because of my being at home and Deb working that we ended up getting cell phones. Um, ah. Because Deb was always the networker. She was the one who was connected to... Um, you know, homeschooling, unschooling groups around the area. And so she would be in contact with all these outside people. Um, and so she would know when there was an event that somebody, you know, something was going on that Joshua and I might want to go to. Okay. And so she would be in contact with us and we would, would go and go to these events. Well, the reason that we have the cell phones now is because at one point um, I was going to one of these events and because the weather was questionable, the event was canceled. Mm -hmm. And of course I didn't know that because <laughs> I didn't have a phone. And so I'm at the park and I'm wondering why there aren't any other people there. <laughs> um, and then, you know, a, a couple of folks did show up but they had much younger children and they didn't seem to be homeschool people. And so when I got home and I, I, I called my wife when I got home and I said, you know, this was kind of a weird event. I didn't really <laughs> see all that people. And she said, well, there was a reason for that. Um, and, and so within the next week or so we ended up getting um, cell phone and, and not, not even smartphones at the time, just, just something yeah. that we could, you know, so we could stay in contact. Um, and then once we had the cell phone and learned that I could take pictures with it, yeah. whenever we were doing something, you know, I would take a picture and, and send it to Deb and say, this is what Joshua and I are doing today. You know, this is the, uh, this is the, the, the big hole in the ground we're digging and, and we're playing with a, with a hose and creating a, basically creating a mud bog in the backyard. <laughs> and, uh, and so we would have pictures of the, you know, the water experiments. We'd have, um, you know, if we found something, you know, we found a turtle in the backyard, we'd take a picture of it. And then when Deb came home, she would talk to Joshua about the picture. You know, what, you know, what was it like holding on, you know, holding a turtle or, or, or 
you know, looking at a frog. And, um, and also she and Joshua have their own, you know, have their own connection. Um, even when he was very young and she would go to work, um, you know, she would tell him that there's a part in, you know, that, that, that there's a part of her brain that is always thinking about him. And so once, you know, once they got, you know, once they, they kind of understood that they had this connection already, um, coming home, it, it was very easy to just, you know, settle back into to family life. Um, and that continues today. Um, Joshua has his own phone and he can email or text with Deb any time of the day. You know, she's got her phone with her all the time. And so there's always a line of communication open. Well, that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. I guess then pictures have been around for quite a while now. I know I used to, uh, I would email uh, little snippets of stuff to my husband as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's really nice. That's nice. Yeah. We're always, well, always interested in what, you know, we might not understand what each other, what everybody else is doing, but we're always interested to know, you know, did you enjoy what you were doing today? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's connecting deeper with, with the person, not just the the activity itself. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Um, you mentioned, uh, well, I know you're, uh, you've been doing duct tape creations for quite a while, and you've moved into writing and publishing uh, some sci-fi novels. Uh -huh. And as you mentioned a bit earlier, you've been getting more time now to work on your own projects as your son has gotten older. So I was just curious what that process looked like. Um, it, it was so gradual that we didn't even notice that it was happening until we realized that it was there. Um, when, when Joshua was younger and we would go to craft fairs for, um, I mean, for the duct tape, mm -hmm. it, we would go to craft fairs and Joshua being too young to stay home by himself had to come along with this. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually he got to a, an age where he could say, you know, I really don't want to come, but I don't feel that comfortable staying home alone either. Mm -hmm. And we got to the, to a point where, you know, I said, where I, where I told him, well, I understand that, you know, this isn't your thing. This isn't the thing that you want to do. And it's not fair to us or to you. That is, it's not fair to Joshua that we drag him along and he doesn't get anything out of it. Um, so we part, so we started paying him for coming to, to the, to the craft fairs. You know, he would help oh. set up and then he would, find a place where he could take a nap for the entire time that, you know, oftentimes he would sleep during the day and, and, and play. Mm -hmm. at night. So he would help us set up and then he would find a place where he could just kind of crash and, and take a nap while we did our thing. And he would get a percentage of whatever we, we took in for that day. Once he got old enough that he could stay home by himself, then it became his choice. Do you want to come and, you know, earn your 10%? Or do you want to, or whatever percent it was, it sometimes mm -hmm. varied. Um, or do you want to stay home? And once he became more comfortable with staying home alone, then um, you know the, the question's always there: Do you want to come or not? And you know, f for the most part, he'll stay home when we go and do these other things. Well, at the same time that he discovered that it was okay to stay home by himself. And that he actually enjoyed staying home by himself. Um, he also got to the point where being able to entertain himself when somebody is there became uh -huh. a, a it, it became you know a thing for him, where mm -hmm. he didn't have to have one of us to play with. Um, this probably he was maybe 12, 13 when he got to that to that point. Um, and 
so as his um as he became more self maintaining I guess a good way to, to put it um having more free time for the things that need time to do and he know this gave me time to to, to do things Joshua helps out a lot too um he'll he'll read my books after, I mean he's actually read everything that I've written pretty much um he's as good at um finding mistakes as my wife is and so he's you know he he could very well become a copy editor if he wanted to wow um he may or may not i won't push him <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> for himself who wants to do that um but he just, you know, so he always wants to know what you know what i'm doing what i'm writing but at the same time he has his own things to do now and it's i i guess it's changed um as he became older and more independent the necessity to do things together as a family has waned a little bit um we still do from time to time we we'll usually end up either all going to a movie together uh like we all went to see star wars together um sometimes we will say let's have a game night tonight where we'll pull out a board game and we'll we'll play it um risk or monopoly or something like that we've got a couple of doctor who themed risk <laughs> games so so um and and sci-fi is a big thing in our household and so we all rally around certain television programs together and we'll you know when time allows we'll play games together <clears throat> Um let's see and also let's see most recently we picked up a what 500 you know 500 something piece crossword or not crossword jigsaw puzzle huh. um and just set it up in a in the spare room on a table where as anybody decided that they wanted to participate would come and put a couple of pieces in <laughs> I and, love that. <laughs> yeah. And so there was, you know, where either somebody would be in there by themselves putting the puzzle together or two or three of us or all of us would be out um trying to put something in there. And so we find ourselves doing the same things and we find ourselves going our own way. And we seem to be just as comfortable either way either way it happens. No, oh, that's awesome. You you sounds like you guys have all, you know, just come to a, a find a rhythm. Yeah, that's a good word. Yeah. A rhythm. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for speaking with me today, Rick. I really enjoyed diving into uh, the dad's perspective for a oh, bit. Yeah. It's really, yeah, <laughs> um, it's very fun. And, and it and it's funny too because being a stay-at-home dad, um, a stay-at-home unschooling dad, for that, yeah, um, I get to bust demographics all the time. You do <laughs> a whole lot of us. <laughs> But yeah, no, that's awesome. There are some. There are some. Yep, yep. We'll find them. <laughs> <laughs> and before we go, where's the best place for people to connect with you online? Um, Facebook is, you know, I'm always available on Facebook. Um, you know, my name, Rick Rossing. There aren't a whole lot of people by that name. Although I found out that the name itself became synonymous with the uh, the rapper Rick Ross where Rick oh. actually is an, is an entry in the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> um, I was slightly amused and also slightly disturbed by that. But uh, I'm easy to find. And, you know, so I, I'm, let's see. I, I, and I also frequent a couple of unschooling groups. 
Um, there's a, what, a radical unschooling group. There's a whole life unschooling group. Um, I'm on a sci-fi fan group called the Dragon's Rocket Ship. Fairly easy to find. Um, really, and and yeah. So I'm I'm out there. <laughs> <Easy to laughs> and your books, your books, they're lose. Yes. They're they're out uh, they're on Amazon and all the regular places. If someone wants to look up those as well. Yes, and I would be happy if 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 somebody did. Um, <laughs> one you know one of the best things to to say you know one of the best things you can do for an author is to read their books and write a review. Um, mm-hmm. And I would I would ask people to do that whenever they read anybody's book. Um, if you buy something on Amazon and you like the story, even if you don't like the story, write a review about it. Um, it, you know, it just, you know, it can be as short as I like this book or this book wasn't for me. Um, authors love people to, to read their stuff, but they really like for people to tell other people that they've read their stuff. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a great day. Always enjoy. Thanks for listening today. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash podcast. You can also get your free Exploring Unschooling ebook at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash exploring unschooling. If you'd like to connect, you can also find me on Facebook at Living Joyfully. Until next time, have fun living and learning with your family.